Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Plante part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's see what was the basis of subclassification of plant kingdom. So for plant kingdom, what all were the basis of subclassification? So the first was differentiation of plant body into tissues. So some plant body was very simple. There, were, there was no differentiation of the plant body. That means there were no distinct parts of the plants. Like when I say differentiation of the plant body, that means some plants are well differentiated. They have distinct roots, they have distinct stem, they have distinct leaves. So that is known as well differentiated plant body. Whereas some plants were not well differentiated. You do not see a specific root, you do not see a specific leaf. So it is like a, a random structure. So based on the differentiation of the plant body, that was one factor for subclassification of plants. Ability to bear seeds. Now, all plants do not bear seeds. What are seeds? Seeds are those structures from which, from which new plants are formed. So now it is not that for every plant to reproduce, seeds are needed. There are a group of plants where they do not bear seeds. There are no seeds at all, but still those plants are able to reproduce. So based on whether a plant bears seeds or not, they are also classified. Type of seeds. Now for the plants which bear seeds, for them again, the seeds can be covered. The seeds can be naked. So again, depending on that, some classification has been done. So these are three important uh, bases for subclassification of plant kingdom. So now we will focus on the different uh, categories into which the entire and the vast plant kingdom was classified. So this screen actually tells you the entire flow of classification of plants. So here the plant kingdom is classified into two types based on the body differentiation. First one is plant body not differentiated. They are known as thallophytes. That means there is no distinct root stem and leaves. And the other category was those plants whose plant body was well differentiated. Now for plants whose body types were well differentiated, they were again divided into two types based on whether they have the vascular tissue or they do not have the vascular tissue. What was the vascular tissue? We spoke about vascular tissue in detail in class 9th in the lesson tissues. These are nothing but the tissues present in plants which help in conduction of water and minerals to different parts of the plant. So now you might ask that if there are plants which exist even without vascular tissue, then how do they conduct water and minerals? We will talk about that little later. But don't think that they cannot survive without vascular tissue. But there are some disadvantages without vascular tissue. Okay, anyways, so the plants which were without vascular tissue, they were known as bryophytes and then the other section was those with vascular tissue. Again, the plants which were with vascular tissue, they were divided into two types based on whether seeds are produced or seeds are not produced. Seeds not produced, they were known as pteridophyta, here P is silent and those, with, those plants where seeds were produced were known as phanerogams. Again, as I said, plants which produced seeds, again, you can divide them into different classes. So the phanerogams where seeds are produced, again, they were divided into two types based on whether the seeds were covered or the seeds were naked. So those with naked seeds were known as gymnosperms and those with covered seeds were known as angiosperms. Again, angiosperms, that is those which were with covered seeds, they were again divided into two types called dicots and monocots based on the number of seed leaves that they have. So one was dicot and the other one was monocot. So this was, this is broadly the classification of the plant kingdom based on similarities and dissimilarities between different types of plants. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about each of these types in detail one by one. So we will start with the thallophyta. So thallophyta is the one. Okay, F first in this slide, let me tell you what are the different groups that we will study. Thallophyta, bryophyta, pteridophyta, phanerogams, wherein we will talk about gymnosperms and angiosperms. So let us start with thallophyta. What are thallophytes? 
so these are the plants with no body differentiation as i said they do not have a specific root stem leaves shoot so there is no specific differentiation of the plant body so they are known as thallophyta so in fact the term thallus thallus or thallophyta whatever you call it 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 actually means something which is little vague something a, a mass of uh, some cells which are not differentiated into anything and phyta means plants so plants without any body differentiation are thallophytes they prefer aquatic habitats you can see these kind of plants in water they are less seen in on land example the best example is green algae so we all know green algae we all would have seen green algae you would have seen that on the surface of the pond sometimes you see that green grass like structure are there as you can see in this picture also or you have you would have even seen this green algae on moist areas that like, like even on rocks or on land where there is a lot of moisture where water is present so there also you would have seen this green grass like structures are structures are formed so they are known as they are nothing but the green algae so green algae falls under this um, thallophyta group so we will talk about green algae in detail now we will talk about the structure of algae the way it reproduces the life cycle of an algae and the further sub classification of algae now here i would like to mention one thing since we have already spoken about algae in some of our previous lessons as well you remember we spoke about uh, the blue green algae which is also known as cyanobacteria so that algae falls under which kingdom it falls under monera kingdom so blue green algae is also known as cyanobacteria and they have more characteristics similar to bacteria that is why they fall under monera again some of the red and brown algae fall under the kingdom protista we spoke about diatoms and dinoflagellates right so they are some of the red or brown algae which falls under protista the remaining algae be it green algae or red algae or brown algae they all fall under the plant kingdom so please remember this it doesn't algae doesn't mean that all algae will fall under one kingdom some algae are monera some algae are protista and all others are plant in thallophyta they have a hidden reproductive system that is why they are known as cryptogamy what do i mean by hidden reproductive system hidden reproductive system means that the reproductive structures are present inside some small inconspicuous structures so they are hidden they are not open the reproductive structures are, are enclosed inside something they are present hidden somewhere so that is why they are known as hidden reproductive system and organisms with plants with hidden reproductive system are given a term called cryptogamy crypto means hidden gamy means marriage so marriage is something which is related to reproduction and crypto means hidden so that is why they are called cryptogamy because they have a hidden reproductive thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again